we're going to be having a wonderful time and sharing some experiences with the one and only Archbishop Margaret Benton Idahosa for her 77th birthday. But Benson and the child walked out of the room. That was what got me into Christianity. Wow, miracle. That, that was what got me into it. Mm. And he came out and said, give the child food. So we gave the child food and he rode his bicycle and left. In the midnight, mm. I was going to pray. And I was thinking, I was thinking all day about that miracle. Mm -hmm. Because the coffin was already bought. The father had gone to get the death certificate. The father came to meet the child alive. So I thought about it throughout the night. And I knelt down by my bedside and I was just praying. And I said, God, what type of power mm. have you given to him that we don't have? Mm -hmm. Can I have that same power? I was praying. I didn't know what I was praying, but I was asking God, different, diverse of questions and I didn't hear the voice of God but I had peace on the inside. So the following day he came as usual and I, I said, bro, come on, what happened? What happened? What happened? What was that power? I started all over again to preach to me, the finished work at Calvary for me and I can do it as well. So I started going to church with him, with my little brother called uh, Peter. That was at uh, Fewaka Memorial School. It's no longer there. That is where uh, the Ministry of Education was before they moved to their permanent site. We started going to church and all that. And when it was time for me to get married, my father said, no, you cannot get married to a hallelujah man. Ooh. I am an Anglican, yeah. a dying one for that matter. Okay. And an elder and whatever they are in whatever. And he said, no, you cannot. I said, okay, okay. what do we do now? But Abensi said, no, just give me time. Let's pray. So we started praying and all that. After, after some prayers from days of prayer, days or weeks, I can't remember, 77 years. No, that was when I was 28 years old. But after the prayer, nothing happened. My father was adamant and he said, no, you will not allow, allow us to get married. But my mother said, marry who you want to get married to. Follow your heart, wow. follow your mind. So my mother was behind me and so I was very, very happy. So we got married. He didn't come, but the brother came. Mm -hmm. All the other brothers came, but he didn't come. But we got married. I'm glad that uh, before he passed, mm -hmm. we were his darling. Oh yes, I remember we changed, that. We changed his house, mm -hmm. we changed mm -hmm. the furniture, we gave him all that he couldn't get for working in the uh, PWD for years. And he was happy. He would come spend uh, some time with us yes, and we take, we take him home. Mm -hmm. So that was how uh, that one happened. You asked a question. If, uh, um, if I want to advise mm -hmm. any uh, maiden now. Yes, that wants a lot of young women now young, are at the age women. of marriage and they are wanting to know what are some of the qualities that would be 
um, found in a, in a gentleman that's approaching them and wants to court them, wants to marry them. And um, sometimes the society gives such a different view of what are the values that should be reflected um, in, in these grooms. And so if you could just shed a little bit of light, you kind of mentioned a few things about, about your husband, that he was a generous man, he was a kind man, he loved to share, and um, he was like a brother to you. So I, I would like you maybe just mention a few more um, things that you think may be important for them to look out for um, in this time. In this time, the 21st century, I will advise a young lady that wants to get married. Number one, make sure that person has a job. He has work to take care of you. He must have a job because J Adam B. and Eve mm -hmm. had a job. No, Adam had a job before yes, he Eve did. came. Mm -hmm. God told Adam, I said, hey, I've given you this white garden. Dress it and keep it. Mm -hmm. That was a full-time job. That was a full-time mm -hmm. job that God gave. So if any young girl wants to get married, you must make sure the person that you want to get married to has a job. Mm -hmm. Number two, he must be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Don't say, well, um, he's not a Christian now. I will change him when... Uh, when I'm uh, in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. If he's not a Christian, he will not be a Christian then. Mm -hmm. So you must be a Christian. And not only that he goes to church, mm -hmm. you must make sure that he is truly born again. And uh, there are some that uh, fake it, mm -hmm. that they are born again, and, and after marriage, you say, honey, let's pray. You say, oh, just pray for me, and, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that is problem. It's, 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 it's a catastrophe mm -hmm. yeah. when you get married to an unbeliever. The Bible says, don't be don't yoked. Equally yoked. That's right. Don't be equally yoked with unbeliever. So you must, the man must have a job. Mm -hmm. Must be a committed Christian. Mm -hmm. Committed Christian. Or he will use you as a punching bag Ooh. after marriage. And nobody likes to like a daughter to be a punching bag. No one at mm -hmm. all. So I, I strongly advise a committed Christian. Three, he must be one in the church that is doing something. Doing something is Either a now. Sunday school teacher mm -hmm. or an usher or, or parking lot, media. Whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever he is doing and they know him. Mm -hmm. The pastor knows him and he does it with all his heart mm -hmm. and uh, after that they consider him mm -hmm. then you have to go through uh, marriage counseling mm -hmm. and then get married so that you know why we are why i'm saying mm -hmm. all this so that you will be able to have people to call on to when there is problem i won't say Marriage is a bed of roses. No, mm -hmm. it is not a bed of roses. There are times that there are problems here and there, but patience, perseverance gives you a good home. It's not love. It's not love. It's communication, mm -hmm. perseverance, mm -hmm. and patience. Patience that keeps it going. You must communicate with your husband or with your wife. You must persevere mm. so that the marriage can go on. And after a while, it's settled and it's going on smoothly. So, so let's talk a little bit about handling things that you'd never envisioned in your life. As a matter of fact, I never thought mm -hmm. in my entire life that I would be married to a pastor. Sounds so familiar. Because the, 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 the pastor I knew then, <laughs> they had tattered clothes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they, 
green, green, uh, green jacket, with, red uh, trousers. Oh, it was just like that. Mm -hmm. And I said, and their shoes all eating. Always up. laughing said, oh, shoes. No. This one, mm -mm, I, won't <laughs> I won't be married to a pastor in my life. Plus, I want a man that I will be married to, who hands, mm -hmm. hand in hand, go to the movie together, oh, wow. come to restaurants, sit down, eat, and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. That was what I said I was going to be. But you know, God had a different plan. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, the worldly addict says man proposes, but God disposes. And I said to myself, this is what I was going to do. But when he came along, everything changed. Mm -hmm. I believe he prayed. Because these are the things that we used to sit down to talk mm -hmm. when uh, he hadn't proposed mm -hmm. to when me. When you were single. Yes, when, when I was single, we'd sit down, we'd talk, I said, and you ask me what type of man will you be married to? I said, what type of woman will you uh, be married to? You know, we're talking here, talking here and there, but I never thought I would, I would be married to a pastor. Mm -hmm. But I believe he prayed. Mm -hmm. And you know, prayer changes things. Then I didn't know it, but I believe he prayed. And uh, when he just proposed, I said, okay, no problem. I, I, would just, uh, I just want to just be what you want me to do because he has always been a big brother to me. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I used to fight very well. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> So when, 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 when things happened before I, I, I was single, my mother would say, go and call his brother. By Atieri. Then he would come and sit me down. Girls don't fight. Mm. Girls, I mean, good girls don't fight on the street. And he, 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 he cancelled me from the word of God. And I said, okay, all right. And that was, and that was how that one went. But I still fight you now. You still fight. You still I, fight I, I now, still just differently. Fight. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. but it's different now. Mm -hmm. I fight anything that the enemy will bring to my way, to my children, mm -hmm. to anyone that I, I know of. I fight mm -hmm. and I win. How do you fight? Oh yeah. I fight through my prayers. Mm -hmm. I fight through the word of God. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And I fight through mm -hmm. fasting. Oh yeah, when, 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 I, when, when I pray and the thing refused to go, I fast about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, Father, this kind will not come out except by prayer or fasting. Let me add fasting to it mm -hmm. and I, I will mm -hmm. I'll always be victorious. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Right, amen. So that was that. That was that. Mm -hmm. so, so then you started having children. And well, you didn't have children immediately, and so that was a journey for you. And oh, I wanted, yes. and I wanted us to talk a little bit about that because there are women who um, have challenges with childbearing and have are having a lot of stigma from the society, and a lot of things that you can you could relate to at the time. And I, if you, I just wonder if you have a word of encouragement and to tell us a little bit about how that journey was for you as well. When I got married, I didn't have children on time. Mm -hmm. but you know. The concept of Africans or Nigeria, when a woman is married, the next six months they are expecting your I'm stomach mm -hmm. to be protruded. Or it's either that one before you get married. But my case was different. First year, there was no child. Mm -hmm. And I passed through hell from my family and your family. I passed through here. But my family? Don't... Yeah, of course, your, pe... <laughs> your people. Your my people. people, oh yeah. yeah. There was a time they called me and said that, we want to know who is a man. Amongst yeah, I remember you. this story. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. whether you are the man or... You've told us this story several times. That's such man. a and painful... We want to know who is the husband. Yeah. Who is the wife? 
Wow. And in good. another incident, then we had a motorcycle. We were mm-hmm. riding a motorcycle. They called him in the family house. And they said, when you are coming, don't bring Margaret. And he said, why? Margaret is my wife. I have to. So we went. He took me in his back. We went to the family house. When we got to the family house, said, you brought Margaret. No, we don't want her in. Mm. My husband said, why? He said, because we want to talk to you alone. I said, and he said, what you want to tell me, mm-hmm. if you cannot say it in the presence of my wife, mm. then that thing is not important. Mm. And do you know what he did? He left them. Wow. I said, Margaret, sit down my, my back. We sat down and we went home. And they left us alone. alone. Mm-hmm. They left us alone. Yeah. After the second year, no, 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 no child coming. The second year, <laughs> and I went everywhere. There was one doctor, Doctor Oguro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was the best gynecologist then in our time. So my husband paid a lot of money and said, "Go and see that." So I went to see him. He went to work out. I went to see him. And he looked at me. He examined me. He said, my darling, let me be frank with you. Mm-hmm. You can't have children. Wow. And I said, how? He said, because every womb is like this mm-hmm. to receive. Mm-hmm. But yours is like this. Mm-hmm. It's still children. Mm-hmm. It cannot carry children. From Mission Road, I started crying oh, yeah. down to New Bini. Mm-hmm. I cried my eyes out. My husband came in the evening. I said, what's wrong? I said, this is what Dr. Oguru said. He said, Margaret, if I be a man of God, God will give us children. Mm-hmm. Unless if he has another God that he is serving behind mm-hmm. and or you I, said, I don't have any other god so we entered we went into prayers we prayed that year children did not come the fourth year children did not come then golden lindsay and pa elton came uh golden lindsay came to visit nigeria and pa elton now brought golden lindsay to us in uh, Miracle Center. And God in this day prophesied and said, You will have children. Then he said, Before then, you will follow me to America to go and be trained. So, few few months later, my husband got a visa and he left for America. I was left at home, but I didn't feel it. Because I was busy, busy in the church, busy, busy. busy going for mm-hmm. crusade, mm-hmm. busy praying here and there. And uh, he was supposed to spend two years. But after a year, I think the Lord convinced him to go back home because souls are perishing. <laughs> so he left and came. Do you know, he came, uh, uh, came back after a year. Came 71. And after a year, I took him for my son. And I told my husband, oh, I missed my time. He said, I don't look for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't look for the time at all. Time yeah. is gone. Mm-hmm. And nine months later, I had uh, my son. Six months later, I was pregnant. Mm-hmm. I went to uh, uh, London in uh, Leeds. Leeds. I yeah. was in Leeds for uh, more than a year. I was pregnant before I left, but you nobody didn't. knew it. Uh-huh. One person knew it. I was Uncle Gabe. Okay. He's dead now. Uh-huh. He, 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 called, he wrote me a letter and said, uh, Mom, you are pregnant. You are going to have a girl, a baby girl. And I said, Honey, and I, because then we have to go to it was a night here. Night here to oh, go yeah. oh my god to oh. go and and call international international call and everybody will sit down looking and you will enter the cubicle and you have to shout hello mm-hmm. hello 
forever. What everybody will be hearing what you are saying. But you know, I mean, to cut the long story short, I had a baby girl in London, mm -hmm. and he came. We all rejoiced, mm -hmm. and, and then we came home. And, and after a year, mm -hmm. I was pregnant of Daisy, mm -hmm. and we thought we were finished. Mm -hmm. Four years before you showed up. I showed up. up. Thank you. I but I'm that. glad. I'm glad Thank you showed you, up. I'm you glad did. you are here. I'm glad I'm to glad see I'm what here. you are doing. I'm glad I'm here. Thank you. Thank Praise you. the Lord. Thank you for making room for me. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then, and then you went on to have more children. Oh you yes. Did. Oh you, yes. Oh yes. You, you, oh yeah. My mom. My, I told my mom that I was going to have seven children, mm -hmm. and my mom was very happy. But when you all were growing, and then. We will be left home together. I mean, I mean, we will be left alone together because I know that you all left home at 15. Mm -hmm. And we were just together. And I said, no, 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 no. I must have other children. Mm -hmm. And I had four other children. Yes, I remember breastfeeding two of them. Mm -hmm. And I was so, so, so happy. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God that Thanks these ones God. are my, my joy. Mm -hmm. My joy, now they are still at home. I'm waiting for them to get married. Yeah. They've just finished their school. Now one is still in the school, and I'm so happy. Mm. I'm waiting for them to get married. There is an aspect I need to tell you or reiterate to you about my, about the day we got uh, wedded. The day we got married, we borrowed our car. Before the reception was over, the owner of the car told my husband that he had a place to go, so he took the car. And when we, it was time for us to go home, there was no car. I had to tiptoe, my husband had to carry my veil, and we had about eight houses before we got to our house. 